Hello, welcome to Show Attention Span Theatre. My name is Tom Brogan. And I'm Mary Davidson, and this is the third of our online shows. If you've missed any of our previous two, you can catch up with them online. So tonight you're going to see six monologues uh, performed by six terrific actors. And if you want to find out any more about the creatives and the plays in tonight's show, you can find them on www.shortattentionspantheatre.co.uk. If you have any younger viewers with you tonight, this is just a heads up that there are some adult themes and strong language in tonight's show. So all that's left to do now is to ask you to enjoy the show. Enjoy. So, like, what do I have to say? Just like, hi, my name's Joe. Or, I, I don't have to have one of those interesting facts, do I? Because those things really stress me out. Like, you've got to have the most interesting fact in a group because the most interesting fact wins. Like, I don't know, like, um, I can name all 151 original Pokemon. I don't know if I can anymore, actually. Uh, I'd probably get as far as Jigglypuff Wigglytuff and then... But, I, I mean, you can't have the most boring fact in the group, like you have a coin collection or, or you haven't bought any new clothes for a year because then everyone just thinks you're really tragic. Um, I actually haven't bought any new clothes for a year and a half. I'm quite proud of myself. It's good for the environment, you know? And uh, I mean, it's fucking awful, isn't it? The fashion industry, it's just... Safe space. Yeah. Okay. Um, I am uh, 35, which literally terrifies the shit out of me. Um, well, I mean, not, not literally, you know, but I mean, not that. My bowels are actually quite... So I tried to come here once before, a couple of years ago, uh, but thought it was all a load of shit really, all the God stuff, and I thought all of you people were, well I mean not actually you people, the, the you people that were here before you were here, um, thought you were all fucking mental. Like loop the loop roller coaster, lock them up in a straitjacket, crazy people. But as it turns out, I am also crazy people. So, um, oh, clearly not meant to say that. I can see you giving me that look. Okay, um, I don't know, floor, mortal, human. So anyway, I, I thought these places were for like proper addicts, like junkies and alcoholics. And then I found all this stuff on Google and I was like, shit, you can be addicted to emotion, to people. and. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I thought I would come here and it would just be a bunch of middle-aged white men trying to excuse cheating on their wives, but uh, that's what, one, two, three, five, five women here. I'm so sorry, I'm sorry, I, I didn't see you there. Um, so, six, six women here, that's... Uh, Not alone, <laughs> yay. So I don't really know what my vice is, my tipple of choice, my heroin, um, sex maybe, love probably, fantasy definitely, 
my gateway drug was stories. Uh, as a nine, ten year old, I I would just get really aroused reading his dark materials, and I started writing dirty stories about characters from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, where Frank and Furta would strip Janet down to her white underwear and slip a perfectly nail polished finger inside her flower. And, uh, my mum read my notebooks one day and I think it's safe to say she was both deeply disturbed and also assured of my future career in literature. I'm a lifestyle writer on a big paper and uh, there are extended periods where I cannot concentrate at work. I'm sitting at my desk, staring into space, losing myself in these really explicit sexual fantasies about everything and everyone. I mean, I have vividly imagined shagging my best mates, my work colleagues, the guy who sat opposite me on the bus in the morning, I think about fucking everyone and I know that a lot of other people get that, you know, thinking about sex is not an illness but I don't just think about it and then move on, I obsess over it, like I'm sitting in Nando's with my mum and she's talking about her herb garden and I am soaking wet just imagining riding the living face off the guy who is flipping the chicken, it, it's, it's just constant, it's exhausting. My, my friends think I'm shit, unreliable, which I am. And no matter how much I like my boyfriend or how perfect he is, I cannot stop myself from cheating on him. Even when I'm happy, especially then, it's like I just crave that electric feeling of someone new and I have tried so fucking hard to ignore it, tell myself that I don't need it and then I'll have a few too many gins on a works night out and the next thing I know I am disappearing down a quiet alleyway with a work colleague who is not even that fit but told me that my tits looked amazing and it is never worth it and I feel shit and I don't know why I keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Just lather, rinse, repeat. And it's not just about sex. It... So I met, I met this guy, Bradley, photographer, on a job, right? And, uh, and he's really tall and he's got this very questionable emo fringe going on. But he made me proper belly laugh and he acted like I was the most interesting person he had ever met. And we started just hanging out together more and more and I couldn't stop talking about him constantly until eventually my boyfriend, my wonderful gorgeous boyfriend, asked me if I was cheating on him. And I wasn't, but I really wanted to and it had got close. So. I told him the truth, that I was falling for Bradley, and he couldn't get it. How could I possibly be in love with more than one person at the same time? But, but I could, and I was, and so it came down to Bradley or him, and I chose him, and it was, it was awful, just grieving Bradley, I, I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep. I stayed in bed for days and my poor boyfriend didn't have a fucking clue what to do. I mean, how could he? And then I just fucked it up anyway. We had an argument a few days ago and I shagged the Nando's guy on his sofa, which reeked of peri-peri. And it was awful. And I felt nothing except hatred for myself. And I just, I don't, 
I can't. Sorry, you just wanted to know a little bit about me. Okay, so, um, so yeah, hi, my name is Joe. I am a sex and love addict. And I'm ready to do the work. Hello there. Hi, I'm Mark. How can I do this? Hi, I'm Mark. I'm 43 years old and I live in Glasgow. You'll have to excuse me being a little nervous. I'm not used to the camera. I don't really know what to say. Question one. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm what you call middle management. I work for a large insurance company. <laughs> Please don't let that put you off. I've actually worked for the same company for a number of years. I'm climbing the ladder slowly but surely. And eventually I've landed myself with a decent enough job. I know it sounds boring, but I do enjoy my work. It's nice to have something to focus on, and the people I work with are really kind to me. Question two. What do you like to do for fun? Well, I enjoy the cinema and the theatre. They've been for a while. Maybe we could go. <laughs> Question three. What do you look for in a partner? That's a tricky one, isn't it? I suppose I'm looking for someone kind. No companionship. Somebody to come home to. A reason to wake up in the morning. Somebody to spend my free time with. Or someone to break the monotony. But the weekends I usually end up working more. And I know that's not healthy. It's just... Whenever I get into a crowded place... It feels like I don't belong there. It's like that place is for people who are with people, not for someone like me. What I really want is to stop feeling scared. I mean, people say you have to love yourself before anyone else can love you, but where do I even start? I can't even look at myself. I feel so guilty every second of every minute of every single day. Oh, she'd be so disappointed if she could see me now. See, you can't give me what I want. Because I've already had it. I just want my wife back. Oh, God. I miss her so much. It's been two years. Two years of silence, two years of nothing, and I want to move on. But I can't. Uh, and I won't. I'm 
sorry. Hello, I'm Mark. I'm a 44-year-old widower from Glasgow. My wife died three years ago, and although it's been tough, I think I'm finally ready to get out there again. Hello and welcome to another slice of music and magic with me, your host with the most, Simon Super Cooper. The King of the Airwaves is with you here till midnight, spinning the tunes and stories you love to hear. Get in touch, you can reach me on Facebook, Twitter, Insta, WhatsApp and, if you're living in Paisley, Smoke Signal. Only kidding, Paisley peeps, please don't dance on my kneecaps. If you're just joining us for the first time, then where have you been? You're wired to Central Scotland's number one internet radio station. Operating from a top secret location, that's right, it's Super Cooper's Lair, a.k.a. The Fortress of Solitude. Get on YouTube if you want to watch the live stream. Keep forgetting that that's there, but you do, don't you? 24-hour surveillance state. Grr. Here's a guy who knows what that's all about. Our first cut tonight is from Rockwell with Somebody's Watching Me. I hope they are. Is anybody out there? Welcome back. This is DJ Super Cooper. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another wee Donder Doon Memory Lane. Tonight's topic is school days. I want to hear your stories. Tell me all about your punnies, beltings and bunk-ups behind the bike sheds. Here's a quick one to kick us off. Do you remember the card game Scabby Queen? Well, we used to play it every lunchtime. <laughs> it was like old maid with violence. If you were left with the queen, then you get your knuckles wrapped with the side of the pack. Oh! We had this one horrible guy who used to be able to take the skin right off your mitts. Looking back, I don't know why we allowed the headmaster to play. Oh. That was the Boomtown Rats telling us all why they don't like Mondays. Who does, Mr Geldof? Who does? Welcome back, folks. Tonight's topic is school days. Now, we've had a wee email in. Let me see if I can find it. Bob asks, what was your nickname at school? Super Cooper, of course. I was the king of the school. Although there was one lad who used to sing a stupid song at me all the time. It was funny at first, but no every day for a month. Sort of Tim, though. Don't you worry about that. Same boy had the squarest head you've ever seen. And seriously, his head was like a cube. He could have balanced a spirit level on that cranium. Aye, Robbie Squareed. I came up with that nickname. Sometimes you've just got to go with Route 1. Talking of which, here's Chris Rhea taking us on the road to hell. Welcome back, troops. We've had a wee flurry off the back of old Robbie Squareheed. God bless his 90 degree napper. The only bond you could use as a ruler and a set square. Georgie72 says on Twitter he once knew a boy with a huge head and a skinny body. They used to call him the Pez Dispenser. Creative. Like it, Georgie. Like it. Uh, let's see here, another message about Robbie Squarehead, and another. Jeez, oh, if only Robbie was this popular at school. Because despite having a head like a Tetris piece, he just didn't fit in. Uh, where is he now, wonders Sharon67. Who knows, Sharon, who knows. But here's a clue for you. Here's Tiffany with I Think We're Alone Now. Hello? Billy, is that you? 
Christ almighty, mate. How long's it been? I am, I'm on the air now, actually. I fancy you billing me up the night. I was just thinking about school. <laughs> Some of the stuff we used to get up to, yeah. <laughs> aye. Aye, Robbie Pekethley on Robbie Squarehead. I was just talking about him. Mind you, used to sing that stupid song at me all the time. There was a wee Cooper who lived in Fife. What a fanny. And we sorted him though, eh? Do you remember the time he was... What? You're joking. What, he's dead? What, is in no living? When? How? A car accident? But... What do you mean it wasn't an accident? He didn't try and top himself, did he? Oh, grow up, Billy. Come on, I'm trying to do a show here. Oh, piss up. All I did was say his nickname. Nobody's going to know him for that. It was an email. Hang on. Fuck me, Billy. The guy that sent in the original emails just sent in another one. There was a wee Cooper who lived in Fife. What is this? Huh? His name? That's Bob? Hang on. Full name's Robert. Carefully. Fuck me, it's Rabbi Squarehead. Did you see this? <laughs> Billy, is that you, you bastard? You still there? Billy. Billy, fuck! Hey! sitting here putting this makeup on again does it really make a difference do the punters even notice I mean do they see me the way that I see them standing there looking at me up and down what do they really want who the hell knows if they're paying I'm taking Aye, I've been at this game far too long. Oh. I've seen them all. All different ages, shapes, sizes, and attitudes. Give me a wee minute whilst I fix this hair, right? It's got a life of its own. So it has. Never sits the way I want it, these curls. Nah. Oh my. See this comb? It's been a lifesaver to me. Many times. <laughs> Thank God. It's just total life of its own. But none that some hairspray and some Kirby's won't fix. <laughs> That's it. Try fighting against that now. <laughs> Bless me. Bless me. I can't have a cold. I can't. It's no good for business. No a good look. 
We try to get them in the mood with a face full of snorters. It doesn't work. I've tried it. <laughs> See, last night, Punter says to me, which ones do you prefer? I said, well, he was it, of course. But see, if I had a choice, I would say none of them. Still, sometimes I'm lucky. Like, see, last week, me and this one get talking, and uh, he says to me, well, he wanted me to throw ice buns at him. So, I did it. And he says to me, next time, if I eat them, really, really, slowly, he'll pay me an extra 20 quid. <laughs> I says, aye, you're on. Are you going to get me some of the ice coconut ones? They're my favourite, so they are. <laughs> so, that's him booked in for next month. I mean, I can't believe it. Getting paid and fed? Aye, all right, I says. <laughs> Who'd have thought that? It's a shame his wife will not do that for him. But I'm not complaining. <laughs> I keep, I keep telling myself, Stella, you're a survivor, hen. Sometimes you get the really nasty ones. I can't believe that, that one the other week there. Aye. He was really nasty. Leather jacket man, I'll call him. Nay patience, nay manners. Nasty. The three ends. Aye, none of us want them in this business, let me tell you. that he was going to diddle me out my money. I mean, I worked bloody hard for that, so I did. I had it all spent in my head already. That'll pay the lucky bill, I thought. He grabbed me by the head. Kept pulling my hair. Pushed my head up and down, up and down, up and down. I pulled the hair out of my head. <laughs> my knees were bloody sore. They were bleeding. That doorway, it, it was full of broken glass and it smelled of piss. I thought I was going to throw up. <laughs> He was a prick. Aye. It wasn't till his friend shouted on him, Hurry up! <laughs> he was my knight in shining armour. Aye, that was the hardest ten quid I've had to earn in a while. <sighs> anyway, I can't sit here all night, looking at the windy, staring in the mirror. <laughs> what outfit will it be tonight? I checked the weather and it said it's going to be mild. Which is great. Come on, roll on the summer, I say. Nothing worse than stoning out there when it's cold. No, nothing worse than that. You'd think that they'd stay in when it's cold. But no, no, they're always there. Always there. I wonder if I should have worn my pink mini or my purple mini. No, no. I think this one's better. It's darker. If it's darker, the stains are easier to clean off and dry in. So they are. 
No, that's better. <laughs> Thank goodness I've got a better punter than I. Aye. It's my beer regular. Donald. <laughs> I gave him a smile and he's happy, so he is. Maybe I should retire with him. He keeps offering to take me away. You know this. Pish. But then he would think he owned me. No. 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 I'm not going there with a man again. No. 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 He can take me to the pictures instead. <laughs> Been asking me for weeks, so he has. We want you to go to the Coliseum to see that new picture. What's it called? What is it called now? Oh, aye, airplane. That's it. <laughs> My friend Angie says it was really funny. I could be doing a good laugh. Right, come on, hen. <sighs> Get a smile in your cooten. Crazy. And crazy for feeling. So lonely And I'm crazy Crazy for feeling so blue Ooh, I know You'd love me as long As you want it Oh, Patsy, and yeah, you were one of us. I pure love that song. It's my song. And then someday you leave me for somebody new. Worry, why do I? What in the world would I do? Oh, bless me. Bless me. Right. Stella, will you get off your bahuki? My checklist. Keys, lippy, baby wipes, Johnny's, perfume, breath freshener. What have I forgot? There's something missing. Something missing on there. Oh, aye, bananas. Bananas give you energy. Aye, they keep me going. I can recommend them. Right. That's me ready now. Glasgow Central, here I come. The woman that was here before, I liked her. She was sound. Barely made any noise, and once she brought up some cans that her nephew left behind, she said she wasn't really a drinker. The lager must have been Eastern European or something, but I'll drink anything as long as it's cold and frothy. Never once complained when I came home pissed, built out Caledonia, out of key, at the top of my voice. I like the way it echoes as I climb the stair. The couple in flat three, they scowl at me all the time in the shared garden, most Sunday afternoons, right, when I'm just up. I mean, they're miserable all the time, right? He's got this fucking gigantic eyebrow that just stops your train of thought as soon as you see it. You'd think that his wife, partner, whatever, would have told him to shave it in the middle at least. Ugh. I don't really bother with folk in the stair though. That was until that nice woman moved out. Some guy shows up a couple of days later, and he looks like he's taking half the steroids in Scotland. He's wearing one of the really tight t-shirts, and his nips are sticking out so far, they look like scale models of Brighton Pier. He 
He's carrying these humongous bits of furniture that would take me and at least two pals to shift. I thought about introducing myself, but fuck that. I've always had a sixth sense when it comes to weirdos. <laughs> when I dealt with that after my third failed engagement. <laughs> I, I moved out no long after when she started bringing her mates home pissed for the bingo. Nah. One of them, Geraldine, it's like a fucking hu human octopus. See when she groped my tentacles when I was coming out the bog out one night, that was it. Time to stand on my own two feet. Anyway, I was right about the guy downstairs. See the night he moved in? His weight machine or whatever was clunking away. And I was trying to watch casualty. Can you hear a bloody word Charlie was saying? Fucked me right off. But I've seen the documentaries about Roy Heads in America. Pure mental. Can't mind what show that was though. I think it was that Louis Theroux. He'd shite it for most folks, really, to be fair, but you know, better safe than sorry. So <coughs> Put my headphones in. Actually sounded better. Aye, the moans and groans of the patients sounded better somehow. Techno Tuesdays, they're the worst. He obviously has Wednesdays after, right? Because it's fucking doof, 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 doof on full blast for a couple of hours. <sighs> See, I'm up at four every morning to go to the airport and pour pints for the Benadon bound in the, uh, what was it, Alkies? In suits, travelling solo for work. Mm. Basically, <clears throat> Nippy, as I call him, note his face, obviously, is a total prick. I've jotted down his movements, no the toilet kind. Just when he comes and goes so I don't need to bump into him on the stair. I could smell his aftershave over the backdrop of disinfectant in the stair last Friday. I tell you what, he must have shares in that Tommy Hilfinger or something. I just get mine half a mate round the back of super drug. Avoiding them was all going to plan until I made an asset basically, right? Look, once a week I put a bag of empty cans in someone else's wheelie bin. See, I don't have time for all that recycling box pish. It's too confusing. Is it the blue box every set Wednesday or the green box every Tuesday or both? I can I never even know what goes in each one. So, I've got my own system. I put everything in my wheelie bin and once it's full, put it in somebody else's. <laughs> anyway. Ah, I put my bag in his wheelie bin, didn't I? I was hungover and... I swear somebody must have moved the order of them about. It was probably nippy. Anyway, as the only other single guy in the stair, didn't take long to figure out the culprit. Which is no mean feat, given his single-figure brain cells. <laughs> he was a wee bit intimidating when he came to my door. But that's no the reason why I've moved back into my mass. Apart from getting my meals cooked for me, no super noodle pieces for tea though. And my washing's done for me. Turns out that Geraldine has had a rather substantial win at the Mecca Bingo, so uh, she's suddenly become a lot more interesting, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Keep this to yourself, right? We're going for a wee drink and a bit of karaoke later. I'm going to impress her with Caledonia. Shows I'm a man who's in touch with his emotions. <laughs> I don't know if my man's eye my black shirt. Ugh. It was a Monday night during the summer 2016. I just made myself a wee brew and was sitting down to watch the football. England or Wales or something were playing. What was about to happen? Put the football right out of my mind. So, I get myself settled, feet up, football on, and I have a wee glance out the window, and I can see my next door neighbour walking along. Oh no, I think. He's heading my way. No, 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 don't be silly, I try and tell myself. 
Then I see his head swivel, like a wee owl, he to peek in the windy. And there I am, staring right back at him, with my tea in hand. Caught rotten. I'm in. You can't stay. That's what I'm greeted with when I open the door. Nay, hello, nothing. Just, you can't stay. Stand there in silence. He says it again. Eh, uh, aye, uh, that's your cat did in my drive there, the new way. Uh, you want to come and pick him up? Now look, I'm no Joe Exotic, right? The, the stringy mullet and all that, it, it just wouldn't suit me, but I do like my wee cat. You know, he's part of the family, you know, so I'm a bit stunned. I hear my wife shout from the room, uh, what is it? I struggle for words, I'm still trying to process it. Oh, no matter though, because my friendly neighbourhood Florence Nightingale helps me. Eh, uh, that's your cat did in the drive. Can one of you come and get it? I need to get the car out. A few minutes later, and we've went and got the car, and sure enough, looks like the wee fella's gone. We wrap him up in a blanket and put him in a basket on the bed. My younger son knows now and he's raging. Gutted. I tell him not to worry. I'll phone the vet and see if they can help. Poke his eye. That's what the vet says when I get through. Poke his eye. Oh, has he not been through enough? Oh, but no, no. We take the advice and poke his eye. Apparently it's the cat equivalent of taking your pulse. When nothing happens, the vet confirms that he's gone. Here's something, I ask. He's a lot smaller than I remember. A bit of a different colour as well now I look at him. Oh aye, the vet says. They contract when they die and change colour because of the blood. Sorry I asked now. She asks me if there's anything else I can help with, and I say no. One cat-related tragedy is enough for one night. By this point, my youngest son has turned into a bounty hunter outside in the street, looking for the car that got him. So, I phone my eldest son. I uh, listen, pal, uh, we've got some bad news. Uh, uh, it's Ringo, mate. He's gone. Now look, look, calm down. He started greeting. I didn't realise he was at work. Look, look, calm down. Just come home when you're done and say you Just tell me to be quiet. I can hear him running and greeting. Oh Christ. He's speaking to his manager. Family emergency, I can hear him say. His manager says to go, be with your family. I can't believe he's done that. What are you doing? If they find out it's the car, you'll get you. Now look, you're about to drive. You need to calm down. Stop greeting. Go get your girlfriend and she can help you get down the road. Now look, calm down. No. There's no such thing as a cat paramedic, Chris. There's nothing we can do. And he's away in hysterics. This is getting out of hand now. My other boys turned into a bounty hunter outside and my wife, oh, she's got the rosary beads out, saying a prayer, blessing the cat. It's just not the thing you expect from a Monday night. Anyway, my other boy and his partner, they arrive in record time and he comes in greeting and he falls to his knees, which is mental because... The cat never really liked him that much, to be fair, so I wasn't expecting this reaction. The cat... The cat wouldn't be arsed with all this, really. I tell me go in and say goodbye. His partner, she gives me a wee hug in the hall, bless her. He keeps asking for a cat paramedic, she tells me. I just shake my head. They don't exist. That's no our cat! Christ, he's in denial. I go into the room. That's no our cat! 
he says again. I put a, a reassuring hand in his shoulder. We've been through this, son, I tell him. The vet says they, they, they change colour and contract when they die. Which, in hindsight, sounds mental, but I was dead serious at the time. That is not our cat, he says again, adamant. Then all we hear is my youngest boy outside scream, Rango! Christ, this is going too far. I've got one in denial and one screaming the cat's name having a breakdown in the street. So we all go out and we check on him, expecting him to be on his knees and all. And what do we see? Ringo, wandering along the street, alive. We run to him, try and get him in the house. So, oh, we get him in, we're, we're all crying happy tears now. Oh, he's alive! He's alive! It was like Easter Sunday in the house that night. <laughs> Until we realised something. Whose cat was, was that in the room? It turns out it was a neighbour from a few doors down. She came and said, Oh, we've had hundreds of cats. No, another did one. And she left with a basket. I couldn't believe it. All on a Monday night. If anyone asks me now that, mind that time your cat came back from the deed? I can say, aye. My wee Jesus cat. Never did get that basket or that cup of tea back though. But at least we got our cat back. <laughs>